Hello, Drawing and Painting 2. Uh, here I am in my house and I'm going to start a drawing. Uh, in my sketchbook I have put together a format on one of the pages, so I've just kind of drawn a rectangle around the page, giving myself about an inch on the perimeter. Um, and I'm going to be drawing the subject matter of two pieces of clothing on a chair. Mine happens to have a cat underneath the chair right now and I dropped a black, or actually a dark gray, blanket behind uh, the chair over the railing because the spindles just kind of you know very, made it very difficult to see clearly what I was going to be working with. So as I'm looking across the room at, um, yeah, Hopper's going to exit, um, at my subject matter, um, you want to try to look at your full subject matter and divide what you see in half in both directions. And I can see that when I do that, what part of the chair and garments uh, crosses right in the center and this area right here falls in the center in both directions. So when I divide it in half both ways, that's my center point. So I know that on my drawing, oops, wrong way. I know that on my drawing in the middle of the page is where that area is going to be. So I'm going to start by just kind of getting the basic shapes in place. So I know that the top of that garment is going to be right about here and the chair back is kind of coming out and right in here so I can very lightly kind of put things in place um, I've got the seat top the scarf falls right in here so I want you to pick two garments that you want to place on the um, on your chair that's in your image and um, use those to draw from, obviously, because we're drawing from life. And all I'm doing here is I'm kind of getting a contouring of the edges of that garment, looking at the shapes and how they overlap. Of that scarf kind of comes up and over and down like that. It's the edge of the seat. And this is an old, really old chair that's been in my family for a really long time and I've used it for multiple projects that I've done over the years. I really like it. I like the shapes within it. Um, this was a chair that was my grandmother's my great-grandmother's, I should say. It was my great-grandmother's, and then it was my grandmother's. Um, but originally, it was my great-grandmother's chair. Um, so I really like to draw this one. It means a lot to me. So I've got my sweater that I've hung over the, the chair kind of comes up and over here. It's dropping down behind the scarf. Um, and the more you draw, obviously, the, the more you're going to find that... Uh, that you get stronger at creating the shapes that you need from the get-go. So I'm gonna start to get, and if you can see, I'm really drawing quite lightly at this point, because I don't want, I don't want any dark lines in case I need to rearrange or erase anything. All right, so I've almost got everything in place the way that I want it. And there's a, little edge here. This part kind of comes down to a curve there. There's another curve that comes in down here. All right, so I'm gonna scroll back up. Oh, yeah, scroll back up toward my subject. So you can see I've just kind of, I've worked within getting this the sweater shapes in place and I started to work on the contouring in here. I have not done the base of the chair yet. So I'm gonna go back down to my drawing. And you can see um, I've got the top of the chair in place here. This kind of curves around. And the 
this comes down this way. Now when it comes to, let's see if I can get this to come down here at the bottom of the chair. So when I'm working on this lower section of the chair, I do want to think about perspective because I've got these two back portions of the seat uh, that need to be uh, somewhat parallel, not completely parallel, um, but those need to respond to each other. And the seat, this side of the seat is coming toward me and these are gonna to recede to a vanishing point off this way. These two, the vanishing point's gonna be much further away, so they're gonna be a little flatter. Um, but uh, I wanna make sure that the legs, the bottoms of the legs, uh, correspond with that vanishing point that I've got out there. So if my angle of my seat is here, the angle of the leg is gonna be more severe, so it's gonna drop like that. So I've gotta get my, the front leg Make sure I've got that in correspondence. Actually, I think that's too far away. So if that's my angle right here is where that front leg comes down. And I'll worry about getting the, uh, the shapes and things uh, in the, the shape of the legs in just a moment. So I've got my cross, the crossbar comes across here. And there's another one that's coming in here. And of course, I want those crossbars to get wider as they come toward me, because they do. Um, and then I've got the other leg, the front edge of this chair has a thickness. And then this leg starts underneath the chair. And again, if, my, if this is my parallel, then I'm gonna have that parallel. So I'm gonna end that, that leg about there. And I'm gonna, these, these legs have a lot more decoration and curve to them. Um, they've got turnings on them, so I wanna make sure that I'm getting those in place as well. But for right now, I'm just gonna kinda of put sticks in place so that I have, oops, I think this one needs to be a little higher. I'm gonna erase that middle one out. So for starters, I just wanna make sure that I'm getting getting things kind of in the right spot. So there's a narrow bar there, a narrow crossbar here. Those two are the same. They both have lots of curving in them. Um, and then my chair, actually I think I'm a little off proportion here. This should come over, this line should come over a little bit. Because the middle of the seat on this particular chair has, um, has a curve to, curve to it in the center. And that's right at the point of the scarf. And so that thickness of the seat is going to come around like this. All right. So there's the front edge. And I think my legs might be a little bit short. So I'm going to bring these down just a little bit longer. Again, I want to make sure that I'm keeping those parallel, somewhat parallel. All right, that feels, that feels all right. So now I need to look at the shape of the legs um, and start to create the curves. So this has a curving shape like that. It has a ring, a wider ring. It tapers narrower. So I'm going to start to work with uh, getting the shapes of the spindles in place. Um, and I'll come back to show you where I am. But for right now, I can kind of show you kind of the basics of, of the, uh, this goes up and over. Um, 
so you can start to see the cloth on the chair as well as the sweater on the back. So I'm going to work on refining this a little bit more and then I'll come back and uh, show you before I start adding any value. So here I am with my subject matter and I have finished my sketch. Um, I will say that it was more of a challenge because of the um, spindles and uh, parts of the chair. This looks a little, because of the angle my book is at um, to the camera, it looks off proportion, but it's actually correct. Um, so the spindles and the folded cloth and everything certainly uh, posed uh, some challenges. But again, you can see my subject up here. So. Uh, we've got the chair with, uh, I put a scarf and a sweater on, on the, the uh, chair, so that's, um, that's the subject. So uh, choose a chair in your house, uh, add a garment or at least two garments of clothing and get your sketch in place. And once you have your sketch completed, um, then use your time to start to add value and texture to your image. Now, I would like this one to be done in just graphite. I know I've offered um, color pencil um, before, but this one should be in just graphite. 